everyone. We just want to welcome you to our Sunday morning praise and worship service. We are glad for another opportunity that we can come into this house and we can give God the praise, the honor, and the glory that He deserves. I just want to invite you all to stand this morning. We want to open up this morning service in a word of prayer. So I just want to ask Anna if she could open us up in prayer.
project title Invitation to Praise and is taken from the back of our hymnals number one. So if you can find a hymnal, you can turn there and you can follow along as we read through this morning's scripture. Invitation to Praise. And it reads, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye, ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Let the people of God praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. O, oh, let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For thou shalt judge the people righteously and govern the nations upon the earth. Let the people praise thee, O God, let all the people praise thee. Then shall the earth yield in her increase, and God, even our own God, shall bless us. And God shall bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. We want to thank God for the reading of his word, and we know that as the praises goes up, the blessings of God comes down upon his people that fear him. To bless our hearts with a song, we just want to welcome Abigail. So let us put our hands this morning. Good morning, everyone. This morning, the name of our song is Seal the Tree.
those who are called according to his purpose. We, you know, God has given us that confidence this morning to trust him, even though, you know, a lot of times we want to take things, we want to take a battle into our own hands. But don't be like an atheist this morning and doubt God. You know, place everything into his hands and the victory will be ours. Let us all stand. We just want to sing out a couple of choruses and give God a praise. So feel free to clap, to sing, to dance in the presence of God this morning. I will never stop.
no one can fight for me. You know, we just want to, you know, thank Lord for, you know, His greatness, you know, His impenetrability. We can depend on Him anytime, any day. He is always there for us. So we just want to sing out this song this morning. Great are you, Lord. Truly our God, He is great and great to so be praised.
the youth also, I think, came the time out to join with us. So we are really excited that they have chosen uh, to be um, with us in this particular fellowship. And they probably enjoyed it last month. Praise God. There were so many wonderful items uh, on the on the program, and not to mention, as we call it, with a wonderful dish, wonderful meal, and everybody just put, comes together and, and brings something. So, reminded of that, we'll remind you again as we get closer to that time. Praise God. And are there any further announcements? We have it all, all covered. Next week, God's willing, would be the first Sunday of the month of March. Look at that. 2021 is, I mean, it's it's speeding, it's speeding, all right? And so we are looking for, we have so many uh, new persons that uh, we baptized um, 10, but I believe it was, uh, and then we baptized uh, seven, and uh, we're excited about uh, the seven would be um, partaking of the Lord's table with us, uh, and then pray for those presently who are in classes right now, the Young Converts class, and if you, have made a decision for Christ and you have not been baptized, we want to encourage you uh, to do so. All right, the Bible commands baptism for every believer in the Lord. Amen. We have been seeing so many people coming to faith in Christ and trusting in the Lord. We are excited about all that God is doing. Well, oh, or before I forget the Sunday schoolers, all right, you'll be heading to classes in a, in a little while. But uh, today, uh, together with your regular refreshments, uh, Sister Nalini decided that she was also going to bring some goodies for you all. So look out for that little bit extra today. You know you are blessed, double blessed at Power and Science Ministries, all right? So we want to say thank you. And everyone, you are more than welcome. You are more than welcome if you want to bless the Sunday school, if you want to bless the youth as well, um, with a refresh, with refreshment, with a bag, with a box, whatever. You are more than welcome to, to do that. Well, we are going to invite the offering bearers. Would you come with the baskets as we give today's collection? Here is our new man. This is coming from uh, Shivanan, and uh, he is not here today. But he sent this out, and I said that I will share this uh, with the church this morning. So here is your humor for today. So everyone asked a 100-year-old man for his health secrets. I mean, obviously, living to be a centenarian, I mean, folks are still doing well. People want to know, what is the secret? What is the secret of... Living a hundred years, and the old man said, Well, I will tell you a secret. You see, I have been married for 75 years. And uh, I promised my wife that when we got married, that when two persons have a quarrel, well, the loser will have to walk five kilometers. And so I have been walking those five kilometers every day for 75 years. Well, everyone asks him again. But we notice that your wife also is very healthy. The old man answered, well, I will tell you another secret. She's been following me to make sure that I really finish those five comments. <laughs> Please send your humors, all right? All clean, all clean. And uh, I will share it, all right? I will share it with the church. So if you think we have a good one, bless us with it, amen? Laughter is like a medicine, and the broken spirit right the most. Let us all stand uh, as we ask our brother Austin to lead us in a prayer of thanksgiving for what you are about to give unto the Lord today.
in our hymn notes, uh, let us sing number 483 as we collect today's uh, offering, number 483. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. Love you, Lord. Right, but have, there's a high part in this episode. Sing his mercy and his grace in the mansions bright and blessed. He'll be there for us a place. Everybody now, when we all God of the impossible, praise God. 
Maybe your marriage is breaking, it's falling apart. It seems like it's going to end in divorce. What you need, my friend? You need the God of the impossible. Amen, somebody? Doesn't this, folks, is the need of our country today? Isn't this the need of our world today, folks? In the light of all the pandemonium that is taking place, this world needs the God of the impossible. Let us read the scripture. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Amen. That is with God. Amen. Nothing shall be impossible. Father, thank you for blessing the message in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Please have your seat, sir. The God of the impossible indeed has great things in store for you today. Jeremiah chapter 29 and verses 11 says, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for your well-being. Notice what God has planned for us. For our well-being. For our success. For our prosperity. Plans of well-being. Not for calamity. Not for defeat. Not for destruction, God says. In order to give you a future and to give you a hope. Folks, uh, if you need hope today, you have come to the right place. Uh, you are listening to the right sermon today. Amen. Because God is saying um, that I have plans uh, to give you hope. Praise God. I have plans for a bright future for you. Your future right now might be seeming to be doom and doom. But God says, I have a bright future for you. This is my plan. And it is going to come to pass as we follow God's plan. Now folks, we must make a choice. Life is made up of choices. Every day we are faced with making choices. But folks, we must also make the choice to put ourselves in the path that will bring us the blessings. Glory to God. Many people today, folks, need to know what the path is to God's blessing. Because we all want to have God's blessing. But it comes, brothers and sisters, as we position ourselves uh, and we place ourselves uh, in the path uh, of blessings. Uh, there is a path of blessings uh, that is clearly underlined uh, in the word uh, of the Lord uh, our God. Hallelujah. The Bible says, and you shall serve the Lord uh, and he will bless you. Amen. He will take sickness away from the midst of you and the number of your days he is going to fulfill. You see, God says, my path to blessings is a choice that we make. And that choice is to accept Jesus. Amen. Amen. And that choice is to follow Jesus. That choice is to serve the Lord. You cannot dwell, folks, in the tent of wickedness and have the blessings of God then. You gotta get out of that tent, folks. You gotta get out of that place uh, that only has a curse in it. You gotta get out of that and position yourself uh, and place yourself uh, in the place that God wants you to be under His tent. Can I hear you, somebody? Hallelujah! Praise God! In His tabernacle, in His house, He that dwelleth in Psalm 91 and verses 1 says, He that in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Praise God. Folks, uh, the way of blessings uh, is, be, is for you to possess, position yourself uh, in the path uh, of God's blessings. Amen. And that is, folks, uh, you've got to walk uh, in obedience. Uh, Someone who is walking in disobedience and sin cannot have the blessings of God. We cannot have idols in our hearts and have God's blessing. You cannot ignore God and have His blessings. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verses 2, I think, is without doubt one of the most positive and one of the most delightful verses in the Bible. 
just to read that scripture put a smile on your face listen to what the scripture says all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt act not to the voice of the Lord thy God hallelujah Notice what the Bible tells us, folks. Um, yes, as we meet the conditions um, that is underlined in the scripture here, and it is very simple, folks. Um, the condition is that we ought to happen to the voice of the Lord, um, to listen to Him, um, to what He has to say. As we meet those conditions, folks, um, by our own volition, um, there is a surety of God's blessing and divine favor upon your life. The scripture further says, not only would you have his favor, not only would you have his blessings, but it is going to literally overtake you. It is going to run you down, praise God. As I mentioned to you last week, that so many people are trying to chase the blessings of God. And so wherever they think, folks, that they might get a blessing, they're chasing down those blessings. Um, but folks, uh, so many end up in disappointments. Um, but I want to tell you something, folks. Uh, we got to start changing that. Um, rather than you trying to chase a blessing, God says the blessing is going to be chasing you. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The blessing is going to be coming after you. The blessing is going to be seeking you out. Rather than you seeking out a blessing, folks. The blessing is going to be seeking you out as you serve the Lord. God has designed it this way, folks. And I have proven that in my life. Glory to God. I don't beat up myself, folks. Come on, somebody. I don't worry myself to sleep and, and to go to bed worrying about my life, worrying about what I'm going to eat and what I'm going to drink and what I'm going to put on. My Bible tells me as I seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all things shall be added unto me, praise God. Folks, I'm done with chasing them blessings, glory to God. I'm doing what God says. And God says, once I serve him, once I obey him, I will have his favor. I will have his blessings. And they are going to overtake me. Praise God. Folks, we should be seeking to live a life to please God. What is your priority here today? I know we always, folks, we want this, we want that, we want the other. We are thinking about survival. We are thinking about having sufficiency. But God is saying, listen, don't worry about those things. If you put me first, if you take pleasure in serving me, if you delight yourself in me, I am going to bless you. I am going to provide for you. I'm going to take care. You will have no lack. You will have no one. Praise God. You will have no need because I will supply your need. Praise God. It's not wonderful today, folks. I'm reminded about the widow in Zarpha in 1 Kings chapter 17. The Bible tells us that she reached her wit's end. Literally, she was at the bottom of the barrel. Disaster and death was knocking at this widow's door. And the enemy said to her, I have got you now. I've got you now, woman. Yeah, I've got you now. You have nowhere to run. You have nowhere to go. I got you where I want you. I have you in my trap. And so you are not going to make it through this famine. You are going to starve to death. And you will die slowly. Yes, sir. And so the enemy was uh, rejoicing at what was happening to her and what would become of her. He thought uh, that he would have been able to mash her up. Uh, but I want to tell you something. God had another plan. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God had something planned that the devil, folks, um, 
was not even planning about, was not even thinking about, praise God. God always had the plan, as I just read in Jeremiah 29, 11, amen, I've got that plan. The devil might say, folks, uh, that uh, he has you where he wants you. He has you cornered. Um, you have nowhere to run. Um, but you tell the devil this morning that he is a liar. My God has a plan. My God has a better plan. My God has the ultimate plan. Praise God. Hallelujah. Folks, uh, you can supersede your circumstances today as you trust in uh, the Lord. Praise God. And so the God of the impossible was coming to her. Hallelujah. She did not know it, folks, uh, but God was coming to her rescue. He was on her case. God knew what she was going through, just like God knows your situation here today. But God had orchestrated it, folks. Uh, long before the problem came, God had already found the solution. Amen. You can never take God by surprise about it. For every problem you have today, God has the solution. I want you to know that, praise God. Before your problem came, God already had the solution. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah, praise God. Thank you, Jesus, folks. That is my God, amen. He is so awesome, glory to God. And so the enemy said that he was going to destroy her. He was going to completely annihilate her. But folks, uh, God showed up uh, at her house. Amen. God showed up exactly when uh, she needed him. Uh, folks, and she will see the table stood in uh, her life. Um, all she had to do that day is what I'm sharing with you today. You got to put yourself in the path of the blessings of God. Amen. If you're not in that path, the blessings will pass you by, my friend. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. We have seen that in so many cases, amen, that people position themselves in the path of Jesus. I can talk about this for the rest of my time here today, glory to God. Because you see, folks, the Bible tells me that there was this short little man. We all know it, this story from Sunday school. Yes, Zacchaeus. And so he wanted to see Jesus. He wanted to see Jesus. But folks, where did he go? He wanted to see Jesus. Did he run off to the Sea of Galilee? When he wanted to see Jesus, folks? No, Jesus wasn't by the Sea of Galilee. Jesus was right, folks, in his village. Amen. Jesus was on his road. Glory to God. Amen. That's what Jesus was. And if he wanted to see Jesus, he couldn't be at the mall all that day. He couldn't be a movie town that day. He wanted to see Jesus, glory to God. He got to put himself where the Lord was passing. Praise God. Hallelujah. And that man knew that folks, Jesus was passing that day. And I'm going to make sure that I put myself in the path where Jesus was coming. Praise God. He knew the Lord was coming on that road. And he got up in that sycamore tree. Amen. He positioned himself. He placed himself in the pathway of God's blessing. And this is what God is saying. Hallelujah. And today you have placed yourself in the pathway of God's blessing. You have left your homes. You have left your jobs. You have left the time of relaxation, folks. You have left going off somewhere else. And you said, you know what? I am going to position myself where the blessings of God is. Amen. Hallelujah. And so I am going to come to the house of the Lord. Because here, amen, is where God's blessing is. Not in the tents of wickedness. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. His blessings, folks, is where his people is. Where two or three are gathered. He is in the midst. Praise God. You got to position yourself. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, look what the Bible tells us, folks. Glory to God. As she positioned herself for the blessings of God, it was a position of obedience. 
in the position of faith, it always goes together. If a man says that he has faith, that faith, folks, would be manifested. It would be demonstrated by obedience. Obedience will tell you about your faith, praise God. It will tell you, folks, how strong your faith is. It will tell you where you are in your walk, praise the Lord. Your obedience will save that. Surely all of us, folks, who have known Jesus um, and who have been living for the Lord can identify with this picture, praise God. You know, there's a wonderful song that we sing from our hymn books. Uh, Count your blessings. Name them. How, how, how do we name them? One by one. One by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Well, somebody we wrote that and said, listen, um, when God begins to bless you folks, uh, you will not be counting them one by one, but you'll be counting them ton by ton. <laughs> Praise God. That is when the blessings of the Lord overtakes you, the Bible says. Uh, folks, I stand here today and I will tell you, uh, I could count them many. Praise God. I've been serving my Jesus for all of these years. Hallelujah. And he has been so good to me. Yes, I've had many trials in life. I've many pains in life. I've many disappointments in life. But I've also had many blessings in life. Amen. And I've had more blessings than pain, honestly. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I've more blessings than disappointments. Glory to God. And folks, they cancel them out. Hallelujah. And it's just, it's just starting. Amen. When you are a believer in Christ, the blessings as only this world goes, it's just a little bit. It's like a, a couple drops in a bucket. Or even more so, it is a couple drops in a barrel. More so, it is a couple drops in the oceans of the sea in comparison to what God has for us yet still. Amen. Isn't this what Corinthians says? Eyes have not seen. Human eyes have is yet to come. Amen. Yes. Sister, brother, today, listen, uh, some of you might be going through a difficult time in life. Lift up your head and say, praise the Lord, thank the Lord. I know it's uh, just temporal. It is not my permanent position. Amen. Praise God. It won't be long I'll leave this old sinful world and I'll go to be with my Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Folks, that's the blessing ton by ton. Amen, somebody. Praise God. It pays to serve the Lord. It pays, folks, to walk with God. It does not matter what attack comes against you today. I want to encourage you folks, stand, amen, stand. I said to you some time ago, if you stand with God, God is going to stand amen. with you folks. Do not ever run away from the battle. Face it uh, together with the Lord. Victory is yours. Hallelujah, amen. With the Lord, folks, uh, the impossible becomes uh, possible. You can walk in victory, praise God. Uh, the Bible tells us, folks, uh, that even your enemies, uh, your enemies that rise up against you, uh, they are going to fall. You don't have to fight them, folks. God will fight your battles. He told Moses, stand still, and you will see the salvation of the Lord. Do not fret yourself. Uh, Folks, right now, uh, you might be oppressed uh, by some people, folks. Uh, do not fret yourself. Uh, do not quarrel yourself. Uh, do not take matters into your own hand. You just shine for Jesus, amen. And let the Lord fight uh, your battles today, praise God. Hallelujah. Today, folks, uh, you can look upon your enemy. Head on uh, and declare to your enemy, Satan, you are defeated. Sin, you are defeated. Fresh, you are defeated. You can look to your sicknesses today and you tell that sickness, you are defeated. For those of you who are viewing online right now, 
You might not be well. You might be on a wheelchair today. You might have cancer. Whatever it might be today, folks. Uh, you look at it right now and you tell that sickness uh, and you tell that disease uh, that you are defeated in the name of Jesus. Uh, tell that disease that uh, you don't have that last seal on my body. Come on, tell that infirmity. You don't have the last seal on my body. My body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Uh, praise God. Hallelujah. You speak that word, folks, uh, into your body. Speak that word into your life. Speak that word into your situation, praise God. And this morning, let the enemy be scattered, praise God. Do not refuse to live in defeat when God has promised you the victory in Jesus' name. The Lord is waiting today. He is waiting for you to take the initiative. He's taking, he's, he's looking to you to take that step of faith and uh, to trust him. The Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6, but without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must, must, it is mandatory, must believe. Amen. What is the secret, folks? You must believe that God is. Not that God was, folks, Amen. but he is. Some people say, that yes, God um, did some things, uh, but that's what he did in the past. Um, but what God did in the past, um, he is more than able to do it in the present. Yes. Praise God. There's a song, what God has done for others, um, he can do for you. Amen, somebody. Don't feel let out today. Amen. God is coming to you right now, amen, with his power, with his might. Take that step of faith today and obedience. And what God has done for others, he indeed will do for you. What he did for that widow, folks, when she had all she had remaining was just a handful of meal in a barrel. And a little bit of oil in a cruise she was about to make for herself and for her son. Just one last measly meal. Perhaps I, I could see it, folks, because all the ingredients she had, I think all she could have made with that was just a bake. Mm -hmm. It could have been a pot bake, a very small pot bake because of meal and oil. What, what could you do with a meal and oil? Just make a fry bake, a pot bake. And that was it. She was going to die. But as she did what the Lord said to the man of God, make me a cake first. Make me a small bake first. Woman, don't be afraid. Do as you have said. It's not I that is speaking. It is God that is speaking. Hallelujah. You see, the Lord was testing this woman to see folks and if she trusted in him. The Lord was testing her to see if she would have faith. Or if she would say, man, you are telling me this is my last meal here. And you have the audacity to tell me, who are you? I don't know you. And you are telling me that I should make you a cake first. Listen, you got to be pure evil to act something of that. But folks, I tell you something, Lord, something that I have says, just do what this man says. Have faith. Trust. And the Bible tells us she went and she made for the man of God. Amen. Hallelujah. She did what she was told. And folks, lo and behold, she was met with a miracle that is so astounding. Glory to God. Miraculously, that meal in that barrel replenished itself as she exercised her faith and she took out her uh, folks uh, the meal from the barrel to make for the man of God. Uh, the Bible tells us that meal replenished itself as she took the oil to make that pot bacon. That oil replenished itself. Um, it was a miracle that she experienced, folks, not only that day. But folks, I want to tell you something. She lived in a bowl of miracles, praise God. Do you know what it is? Uh, uh, that uh, you can only imagine, folks, uh, to actually be in the midst of this miracle. 
every day for breakfast, for lunch, and for dinner. Hallelujah. Folks, she would watch in that barrel and still see that handful of meal and that cruiser oil. That's what she would be seeing. But folks, every day and for every meal time, when she took from that meal and that oil, miraculously it replenished. Praise God. And it was where it has always been. I would love to be living in a house, folks, for a little bit to see that. Amen. What do you mean, somebody? Glory to God to be a guest at her house and to actually see this thing happening. Glory to God. Amen. That meal replenishing, that oil replenishing, the more she took. In fact, folks, I want to believe too, amen. It was not restricted by three meals a day. Let me tell you, folks. Hallelujah. Amen. So, Rita, if she wanted to have four meals a day, it didn't matter. Praise God. The meal will be there. The oil will be there. If she wanted to have five meals a day, the meal will be there. The oil will be there. You know, if she invited all the neighbors to come over, amen, all of them would be eating from that little meal, that oil, and it will still be there. She could have fed that entire village, amen, from that little meal and that oil, praise God. Because folks, amen, she placed herself in the pathway of the blessings of God then. She determined that she was going to obey what God had said to her. And folks, because of her faith and obedience, she experienced a continuous miracle until the Lord sent rain forever. Throughout that famine that lasted so long, glory to God, hallelujah, that woman had food in her house. I know we are living in a difficult time. All around us are difficulty. Folks, we are not the only persons on this globe that are experiencing hardship because of the pandemic. It is all over the world today. But be rest assured, if you dare to walk in faith, if you dare to obey God, despite of what is happening, I want on the authority of the word of God to let you know that God will keep his promises, praise God, that he has made. God is not subject by the famine. God is not subject by this pandemic, praise God, amen. My health, folks, is not determined by a vaccine. My health is not determined by the medicine that I take, and I do take medicine, folks. Let me tell you, I don't understand you and be no hypocrite, folks. I want to tell you that I do go to the, to the um, to the hospital when it's, ne when, when, it is ne when it's necessary or to visit the doctor when it's necessary. But folks, I want to tell you something. My ultimate trust and hope is in the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Don't worry yourself, folks. Don't worry, worry, worry this morning. I know some of you worrying and right now the question I've been talking to so many persons are. The question today, the million dollar question today, should I or should I not take this vaccine? Some of you waiting on when the Prime Minister will take and he says, when you take it, I will line up after. And uh, Mr. Vial Singh as well, I'll take it after. And you not only that, you want to wait a good six to nine months after and then take it and see what will happen. I understand your concerns. I have those concerns as well too. But you know what, folks? I'm trusting in the Lord. I'm trusting in the Lord. The Bible says that I am the Lord that healed thee. The Bible says no plague will come nigh thy dwelling. Amen, somebody. Praise God. Hallelujah, folks. Don't let your faith be shaken in these uncertain times. Amen. Hallelujah. God is with us, praise God. He has been with me before this pandemic, and He will be with me after the pandemic. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He has been with me all through my life. And when I come, folks, to that point of death, and I've come to exit this world, my Jesus will be with me. Praise God. The Lord is my shepherd, and shall not want. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise he is my chief shepherd. He's my number one shepherd. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise. I know where I'm going, folks. Amen. Something 
jesusstuff.com something's going to take us out of this world it's what it is is a short thing if Christ do not come something's going to take us out of this world i don't know what it is glory to god but folks it does not matter amen hallelujah what matters is that is that i have a new hope amen. i have a heavenly hope praise god amen I'm a citizen of a different country, praise God. I'm a citizen of heaven. And this is what matters most, praise God. So God is waiting on you, amen. And be like that widow today. Can't you be like that widow today? Can't you trust in the Lord? Things are difficult, uh, folks. But trust in the Lord, hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah. And you are going to see the blessings of the Lord. This sickness cannot defeat you, folks. Uh, this famine cannot defeat you. This pandemic could not defeat you. Praise God, because we have Christ in us, amen. Greatness, he that is in us. Uh, the Bible tells us that he that is in uh, the world, praise God. This world can defeat the children of God. Uh, no, folks, uh, it cannot defeat the child. Of God, nothing in this world can ultimately defeat us. Praise God, hallelujah! Because we have God on our side, and God is with us. Amen. It's time to exercise your faith in the Lord. Would you do it? The story is told about the world famous acrobat, his name was Blondin. He was born in France in 1824. His real name was Jean Francois Gravel. Over the years, he became famous throughout Europe and America. In London, he once played a violin on a tightrope 170 feet above the ground. On this side of the Atlantic, he became famous by crossing the Niagara Falls on a tight rope, 1,100 feet long, 160 feet above the water. In his show, he would ask the crowd, like I am asking you today, and I'll ask you in a moment. He would ask the crowd if they believed that he could walk across and back again on this tight rope that was stretched across the Niagara Fall. And the crowd would respond, um, yes, we believe, Blondin. Yes, we believe you can walk. We indeed believe you can walk because we have heard stories of, of your amazing feats. We believe. And so Blondin will do exactly that. He would walk across the Great Falls on that tight rope. On one occasion, he decided that he was going to improve uh, now his stunt. So he brought a wheelbarrow with him. And he asked the crowd, Do you believe that I could push this wheelbarrow across the fall on the tight rope? And the crowd cheered and they said, Blunden, We indeed believe that you can do it. And so that's exactly what Blondin did. He walked across the Niagara Fall on that tight rope, pushing his wheelbarrow. On his return, he asked the crowd if they really believed that he could do it again. And the crowd yelled, yes, yes, we believe you can do it again. Because we saw you do it with our own eyes. You pushed that wheelbarrow across the great falls on that tight rope. So Blondin said, well, you saw me push a barrel, it was empty, but do you believe that I could push a person in that barrel across the Niagara Falls? And everybody cheered and said, Blondin, we believe, we believe you can do it. We believe that, yes, you can push somebody in that barrel across the wall. Well, Blondin looked at the man who was cheering the most in front of him and said, since you believe my friend, would you get in that wheelbarrow? <laughs> at that point, the man said, not on your life. <laughs> you could see the dust rise as he made his quick escape. The man wouldn't go across wouldn't sit, 
in that wheelbarrow because why? Because he really did not believe, folks. He said it, he believed. But that's just words. In his heart, he truly did not believe. Folks, when it comes to faith in Christ, it got to be more than words. Got to be more than words. I have preached to thousands of people, thousands and thousands of people through the years of ministry all over the place. In churches like ours, folks, bigger ones, smaller ones, in crusades, dozens and dozens of crusades, locally, regionally, internationally, all over, street meetings like that. Folks, I have seen people put up their hands when the altar call is given. I've seen dozens of people that do that, put up their hand, folks. I've seen some people walk down the aisles and says, yes, I want to receive Christ. But I want to tell you something, folks. Sometimes those people who raise those hands and even walk those aisles, they do not continue in their faith. Because why? Because they really truly did not believe. Their faith was just circumstantial. Maybe because of the fine music that was being played. Maybe because of the ambience, you know, that existed in that crusade. People were moved. Maybe because they saw a friend walking down, they decided that they would walk as well too. Maybe they felt guilty because the preacher was pressuring them <laughs> to make that decision for the Lord. And the only way to get on that service is I better make a decision for God because this preacher is prepared to let us go until somebody walks down. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, folks. Yeah, I better walk down, otherwise he's going to keep us here all day. Because he said, you know, the Lord is speaking to somebody to walk down. <laughs> and so, come on, by us, take another verse of just as I am with one plea. They sang it and they sang it, folks. Unless that person didn't walk down here, it wouldn't matter. Keep one singing quiet. Somebody better walk down. Folks, I've seen all kinds of things happen. You know what? Because many people just believe with their heads. And they don't believe in their hearts. Amen. When you have a true experience with God, a true experience of salvation, folks, you will serve Him way after you walk down those eyes. But I give praise to all of you. Amen. Amen. You will live for Jesus long after you lift in that hand. Glory to God. Amen. Folks, a genuine decision for the Lord and a genuine encounter with Christ will continue long after you got water baptized. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Long after you went on into those waters and you said yes to Christ, a true confession of faith will go beyond that. Praise God. A true confession of faith, folks, and a true encounter with God will cause you to walk with Him all the days of your life. Amen. Praise the Lord. This, folks, it is the real test of those lifting their hands and those walking the aisles and those following the Lord in the waters of baptism. What does Jesus say, folks? If you continue, then you are my disciples. Praise God. Hallelujah. I've seen so many people starting and they do really well at the beginning. Have you ever seen people running a race, folks? Have you ever seen them running a marathon? I tell you, some of them, they start off like lightning. Lightning speed. They are head of the pack. I tell you, they are shining more than everybody else. They are glowing in the glory. Because they are head of the pack. Um, and they're looking down at everybody and say, Oh, look at you. Um, look at you. Um, look where I am. I'm ahead of everybody. And they're boasting. But folks, I'll tell you, by the time they, they reach quarter of the length of that marathon, you begin to see them slowing up. And then others begin to pass them. By the time they reach half, I'll tell you folks, most of them pass them already. Amen. And they can't make it to the finish line at all. They started off like a flash. And they ended up like a failure. Folks, you've got to learn, amen. Hallelujah. 
to walk with God all the days of your life. Praise the name of Jesus. That's the kind of decision that God is calling you for. Amen. It's like a marriage. If you are not ready to spend all the days of your life with that man and that woman that you are in love with, if you are not ready, folks, to go through the daily grind, if you are not ready to wash them clothes until I tell you you're just seeing clothes and clothes and clothes, if you're not ready to cook them meals and 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 still keep smiling, <laughs> if you're not ready to go to work and make a day's work, folks, and to keep on working, hallelujah. Don't bother about walking down these aisles. These aisles are for you. Hell, the wedding aisles, folks, not everybody can walk those aisles, you know. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not just talking that short distance, you know. I'm talking, folks, amen, about the true distance of marriage. Not everybody. Some, I tell you, folks, they quit real early in the dance. Really, the dance, the getting out, getting out, because why, folks? They're not ready for it. They're not ready for it. This Christian race, not it is not a sprint, my friend. It is a marathon race. It is not for the fast. It is for the faithful. Could I say a praise the Lord? Come on! I said it's not for the fast. It is for the faithful. Praise God. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Don't be bothered. About those who are ahead of you and shining the glory and, and this thing, a lot of a sudden, folks, you see them and one time they get in everything, one, one time. Don't be bothered about that. Don't be bothered about that. Glory to God. Amen. They say sometimes when you see a man, bam, get up the house. They see that father rich or he's selling drugs. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Oh, oh, you make me love you or something. Okay. But folks, you know the way? Amen. Hard work and diligence. Amen. Amen. And commitment, praise God. That's what's going to take, amen, to be the kind of Christian and believer that God wants you to be. Do not look for an easy way, folks. Do not look for a smooth path throughout your Christian life. You will drop all the race a long time. Amen. Hallelujah. Keep looking to Jesus. Amen. Keep positioning yourself in the path of God's blessing. And you will see those things happening throughout your life. Amen. Praise God. But most importantly, folks, wait for it in heaven. Amen. The ultimate blessings come in that celestial city of God. Hallelujah. That's where, it, that's where my eyes are. That's where my prize is all tonight. I do not serve God here for clothes. Come on. I don't serve God here for cars and for house and money. It has never been my thing, folks. And it will never will be, praise God. That's not my goal in life, glory to God. Hallelujah. Because I know, amen, where I'm heading to that celestial city. I have no lack, I have no want. Praise God. I'm serving the Lord because I love Him, folks, and I love His people. I want to see people come to know Christ as their Savior, praise God. That's why I live and that's why I work, amen, amen. God has been good and God has been faithful. As I'm serving the Lord, He's been supplying my needs, amen, praise God. Folks, not my wants because I'm playing wants. He says I'm going to supply your needs, amen, somebody. According to His riches and glory, Christ, Lord, let us all in prayer. Thank you, Jesus. You are saying to the pastor, I'm going to put myself on the path of God's blessing. I choose Jesus. Because when I choose Jesus, I have God's blessing. When I choose Jesus, I have eternal life. When I choose Jesus, my sins are forgiven. When I choose Jesus, my name is written in the last book of life. Praise God. When I choose Jesus, I choose true prosperity and success. That's when I choose Jesus. That's the, the path of blessings that God has for
for me in Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Would you lift your hand today? Have you decided to make that choice to choose Christ? Maybe you need to rededicate your life publicly, but maybe you have been, you're stricken. Maybe you have a walk out been consistent. It says, Pastor, there is my hand to you because I am rededicating myself back to the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Would you lift your hand if that describes you today? For the viewers, if you're lifting your hand, I cannot see, but God's going to see, and I'm going to lead you in prayer just now. Praise the Lord. All those who want to trust in Christ and to receive Him as your Savior, would you say this prayer right now? Heavenly Father, I thank you for sending Jesus. The world's greatest blessing is Christ. There is no greater blessing than Jesus Christ. The one who loved us, that he laid down his life for us. Greater love hath no man than this. Jesus laid down his life. I choose Christ today. I choose the one that went on the cross of Calvary to die for me. That's my choice. I choose the one who was beaten for me. I choose the one who was nailed for me. That's my choice. And that's my choice, Father, for life. There is no turning away and turning back. Father, I offer to you more than words on my lips. I offer to you my heart. I offer to you my soul. Take it, Father. I ask forgiveness for my sin and I receive Christ as my Savior. I would live for Him now and for all eternity in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please, for those of you who have said that prayer, please give us a shout out and we will have somebody calling you and somebody talking and praying for you. Keep sending in your prayer request and we'll be praying for you. Praise the Lord. We're going to open up now the prayer line so that you can be anointed with oil and experience the God of the impossible in your life. Are you going to be like that woman who at the wit's end, she determined to trust God. Trust the Lord for your sickness and disease. If you're not well, why would you trust the Lord? Amen. You've been taking those tablets. And I'm not going to tell you to throw it away, folks. But you've been taking them and you've been trusting them well. You've been trusting that doctor. You don't know that doctor. You don't know his experience. You don't know anything but you're trusting him. But folks, trust in Dr. Jesus today. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Let the tables be turned in your life and in your family. Let's all stand. Ministers of music, would you come? I'm praying for you today, launching you with oil in the name of the Lord. Come now, exercise your faith. Amen. Exercise your faith. Put yourself in the pathway of God's blessing by stepping out and be praying for.
that they shall receive the blessings of the Lord and their faithness. I thank you for prayers answered and I thank you for all your goodness. As we go back to our homes, dear God, may you go before us and prepare the way until we come again this evening. For the next appointed service, may your people continue to be with a heart of thankfulness and gratefulness and praise for all that you have done. Thank you, dear God, and as they have, they will sit with their God to eat their meals, dear God, that no one will go on to no lack in dear God, but everyone will have a good meal, dear God. May God continue to provide for your people, dear God. I know that as we continue to serve thee, dear God, we said that we shall serve the Lord, dear like God, that you shall bless everything that we have, dear God. And the blessing is for now for your people, and we claim that we believe it, dear God, in the name of Jesus. I give you thanks and praise, dear God, continue, Lord, to just anoint your man, servant, continue to be with him and to keep him and bless him in everything that he does, dear God. May your protection be upon everyone, upon this church, our church family, dear God. We just give you thanks and praise for all that you have done and what you are still here to do. And as we come back here this evening, dear God, we come believing and we know that your people shall receive in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.